Hi, Baldi. Hi, what's Welcome going on? Welcome to the interview. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We are from the Emily Carr Fashion Club, and we are so flattered to be able to interview you today. So, before we start, I have a question. Yes. Would you prefer us calling you Baldi or Alex? Oh, this was a good question. Literally, everybody like asks me right off the bat, and I, I personally love Baldi because when I was, I, it was about last year. When some person just like called me Baldi, and I was like, "Damn, that was kind of offensive." I, mm. I'm taking offense at, but then later it was just like, "Wait, I should take this as like a, a superpower." Like I'm actually like, I'm Baldi. Like not many people are called that, and also there's too many people called Alex in a room full of people. I would probably want to be called Baldi. Mm. Um, I might not respond to Alex if there's too too many people because it's such a common name. So personally, call me Baldi. Um, usually my friends and family, like my close to close ones, call me Alex. But like, no preference, honestly. I would, I would probably respond both. Okay. Yes. Okay, there you go. Okay, next question. Who are you? Who am I? Okay, that's a big one. Damn, that's big. All right, so I am Baldi or Alex. I'm gonna drop my full gummy name just cause Alex Chang. That's my full name. Um, I am a vintage. Business owner, entrepreneur, um, CEO, I guess, of Bali Logs the Ribs. Um, do I elaborate more too? I guess or good, but that's it. Okay, let's wrap up. Okay, so I am the business owner, uh, Bali Logs the Ribs. I started when I was in grade ten. Um, it was more so like a CLE project. I kind of elaborated on this earlier. Um, it was kind of like a passion project where I kind of wanted. I dove in more so um, for this charity. I was like, um, it was called Thrifting for a Cause, and then it was like, I'm gonna donate or raise money to donate two fifty. That was my goal um, into like a charity of my choice, and then I hit that target within like a week or something. And then it was just by like thrifting items and then selling it, and then it was just amongst my classmates. Like I would go locker to locker. I'd be like giving like grocery bags. Like I didn't have proper bags, I didn't have proper supplies. I was literally just going to a locker. Hey, do you guys want to check out my stuff? I have like bags of stuff. It was like super <laughs> sketch, but that's where, like pretty much where I started. Um, through like um, CLE class, where it was just like nothing super serious. And so, anyways, um, it was I started on Instagram. It was my first page, first platform I used. Um, it was so bad. Like I had the worst quality photos. I had. Things with my feet out, like my feet were it, like in the photos, my toes were just like chilling there. As I took the photo, if you scroll down long enough, you're gonna see all my toes. Mm. I never deleted a single post, and I was okay for anybody. Like I can't do this stuff. Like whether it be like business entrepreneurship, whether it be like starting your own thing, you can still do it because I was stuck at a hundred fifty followers for almost a year. And I didn't think nothing of it because it was just a passion project.、Um, I think my biggest tip, shit, I might be answering more questions than I should, but、um, is to literally、um, not think about like the the monetary value more so of like doing it because you like it instead more so like it is something that you really really see yourself doing instead of like I want this and this kind of like money. Result from it, right? I never expected anything to happen from Baldi Logs, hence why it did the numbers it did. But that's kind of like a spiel of like a little bit where we started. So that's kind of where we where it came from. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So next question. Okay. What do you look for in a good outfit? Oh. Okay. Okay. So first, oh, you got all the good questions here. The biggest thing I look for in a really good outfit is I always look for colors that match. It has to. It doesn't have to be like monochromatic where it's like blue, 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 blue. But those outfits, if you do do monochrome, is kind of like outfits. It would go like really well hand in hand. It's like a really easy thing to do. Like,、um, let's say you have a, a blue shirt, a lighter shade of blue, and some denim. That would go crazy. But at the same time, you want to do matching colors or opposite colors of like the the color wheel,、uh, like white with blue,、um, 
honestly, why would most things work really nice? Like white underlayer. Uh, I think that's kind of what I'm wearing right now. Just anything that um, basics. Start with the basics, and then um, you can kind of branch off from there. But I guess that's what I look for in a really good outfit, like the color schemes, um, the fitting, um, whether it makes you feel good. I I firstly think of the feel of like when you're in the outfit and how you feel confident in it is also a determining factor of like. Yes, that's an outfit you should wear. Kind of thing. Yeah. Y'all heard it. Baldy Locks likes color coordination. Okay. Okay. Next question. Why did you start as Baldy? Okay. So, like Baldy as in like the name or Baldy as in like the brand? I guess like maybe this this just answer both. Yeah. This is answer both. Okay. So, why I started as Baldy? Let's say why I'm even called Baldy is um, someone actually when I was in grade ten. Uh, I was in English class. I was sitting behind um, my classmate, and he literally just called me a baldy locks. He was like, "You baldy locks," and I was like, "Damn, bro, that was so mean. Why'd you call me a baldy locks?" So I guess it derived from like Goldilocks, cause like Goldilocks has luscious golden locks, and obviously I have luscious bald locks. Like I got like locks standing out of my head, um, but they're invisible. So that's why I'm like baldy locks. That's such a like. Fun, also kind of like a a goofy name mm-hmm. that we came up with, but we just stuck with it. And like the portion thrifts came because, um, yeah, we just started thrifting at like when I was in grade ten because I was okay. Let me bring back to the story of why I started thrifting. Might as well. Uh, when I was in grade ten, I was looking for like Ang the Last Airbender, like a costume. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to become that guy with the arrow on his head, but I couldn't find a costume. I went to Value Village. Um, I looked everywhere I couldn't find it, but like I found a champion hoodie. I, I don't know if you guys know Champion, baby, mm-hmm. but it was a really popular ba- brand back in 2018, and it was like reselling. And I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't afford it, but I found one at Value Village for like five ninety nine, and then I bought it. Um, I wore it a couple times, and then I sold it actually for more, even after I wore it for like a couple of months. So I was like, wait, this is like kind of. Cr- Crazy. Like I just love the idea of like flipping things and like I was able to like afford lunch now all that kind of stuff So that's kind of where I like started more so and how Baldy Locks thrifts was formed yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a long one. Could you please share a bit about your background and how you developed your passion for vintage fashion? Okay, and the fashion industry in general. Okay, so my background is actually Dude, I swear to goodness, when I was in grade 10, I was the most, uh, like, I was poorly dressed. I wore the same hoodie, the same pair of pants every single day. It's kind of gross. But, like, I would wash it, like, every single day. But, like, I would only have, like, literally two hoodies, one, like, one or two t-shirts, and one pair of pants. And I was, like, damn, this is, like, I felt, like, really, like, not confident. Like, I, I didn't feel the urge to talk to people. Um, and then when I like discovered thrifting, I was able to get like things at like a cheaper cost where it allowed me to experiment different um, outfits and whatnot. And then that's kind of where I started with vintage clothing. I didn't know what vintage meant. It was just like a term thrown out there because everyone uses it. But then later, as soon as I kind of got like more in depth into this business, like vintage defined by like a um, person that operates like a store or a vintage store he says it's or she oh they say it's um anything that's 20 years and older so it could start as like 2003 as as old as 2003 so mm-hmm. that's considered vintage so how yeah pretty much how it stems from that is um i started thrifting my background was pretty much like i i started fashion from that scene from that thrifting scene more so yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I don't know if I asked the question. I went you like did. everywhere. Okay, you I did? did? Yeah, you did. Oh, but um, yeah. your passion for it started... Oh, I think my passion more so started when I realized how like, I felt more confident in myself mm-hmm. because of the clothing I was wearing. Um, and also, it made me feel super happy 
being able to provide these garments at like a lower price point to other students that couldn't afford like um like brand new clothing for for instance so it made me like super like fulfilled i was like oh my gosh like yo you're rocking my stuff like in school i see them like wearing my stuff and they like made me super super happy like knowing that i was able to like give them the clothing that they wear on a daily basis and like they feel so good about themselves as well while wearing it so that's kind of like my, how my passion really began spread the love <laughs> okay yeah cherry pick is a unique name for a vintage fashion store. Yeah. Could you share the story behind the name and what inspired you to open the yeah, store? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll give you kind of like um, a breakdown of what Cherry Pick is and how Bolly Locks comes into play here. So Cherry Pick Vintage is a vintage collective with um, a buildup of three other businesses. So we have Quell's Capsule, we have The Room Vintage, and we have Sky Thrifts. Um, these are the, um, the other vi vintage business owners in this one collective. Um, and we share this space um, pretty much equally. And then back to your question, how we kind of came up with the name. Um, so I didn't actually come up with the name. Um, the other business owner, uh, Cole, and, Cole and Chanel, came up with Cherry Pick Vintage because it kind of like resembled if you were to go into a field, right? And then you were to like pick the best fruits, for example, right? We're kind of that hub that is picking the best clothing at like affordable prices. Oh, is that something I should worry about? No. Okay. Um, it's like us cherry picking, like in a sense, like cherry picking the best garments uh, at affordable prices at your convenience, like right at your door, kind of be like. Um, so I guess that's kind of where the the name more so came from. Cherry picking items, cherry picking clothes, curation, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, hopefully that, that answered. Yeah, that was good. Awesome. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Okay. What sets Cherry Pick apart from other vintage fashion stores? Okay. So, why I truly believe that Cherry Pick is different is there is so much more like layers to this, this um, vintage store more than just like profits. Like, more than just making money because I know for a fact like all of us want to see like all of our customers happy we want to make sure that we build like a really big community that supports each other um, and we're like more slow fashion focused um, rather than like okay well that can come second but we want like money first no we want to make sure that all these garments that we're getting is coming from like a warehouse a sustainable like source where um, a lot of this stuff will be dumped like it it sounds pretty bad but like most of these clothes would be dumped if we didn't come and pick it up so that's why i feel like we are changing um the stance on vintage clothing and like sustainability because like 95 percent of all this clothing maybe even a higher percentage too is coming from um a source where it's like it's about to be dumped pretty much into a landfill so we kind of like yeah you know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you describe the kind of items and the overall shopping experience customers can expect when they visit your store? Okay, so the items that you're gonna get are you're gonna get a range of we love um, year two thousand fashion. We get a lot of like things that are within like the McBling era, mm -hmm. things that are super flashy. We have like styles from Carhartt, um, Dickies. Um, popular brands like Kuji, Nike, um, and majority of these are like vintage Nike, vintage Adidas, um, what else can I have? It's Harley Davidson, um, racing gear, so it's all within that, that kind of sector. Yeah. Okay, so you did talk about fast fashion before. So yes, a little bit about it. So we know fast fashion has been an ongoing trend mm -hmm. and it leads to a lot of waste and pollution. How do you believe vintage fashion contributes to a more sustainable and responsible fashion industry today? Okay, so yeah, that's that's a really good question. I personally feel like when you shop reusable sustainable clothing, it's like you're buying off of a previous owner um, that previously wore it. However, because it's still in great shape, great condition, um, and it still has that amazing feel and touch that you don't get from like, a fast fashion company like a mall brand whatever the case may be 
um, you're still able to rock it for another or wear it for another 10 plus years before it breaks down. And plus, with vintage clothing, you're able to literally wear it for decade, maybe even a decade, um, and then sell it after for the same price or even more because vintage, they never make the same clothing again. Um, so it will never be remade, right? So that's why I personally feel like um, if you do shop vintage clothing, it like is a fashion move, like um, slow fashion focus uh, pushes um, fast fashion like out of the water personally because like when you go to like a mall and you buy the clothing they produce it at such a fast pace where um it's like it's so cheap to make plus they have so many like extra stock so much extra stock in the back where once you buy it they're just gonna, they're just gonna fill that rack again with the same item and then once that trend dies it's they have to somehow get rid of that let's say um for example a trend that was super big before maybe in 2016 2018 it was cargo pants that were cuffed like with the what is that called the cinch with the elastic elastic, right but like so many brands bought into that made so many and then i see them a lot in the vintage warehouse because people just dump them because there's no longer use for them right but the thing is with trends they always 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 circle back um, so with the vintage clothing, there's there's that style already made. You just have to find it. For parachute pants, like there's so many like fast fashion brand malls that make parachute pants, but there's already parachute pants made in the '90s, early 2000s that you can buy. Mm. So, anyways, sorry that was a ravel. Oh my yeah, god, that I just went was off. great. That was great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Running a vintage fashion store must have its challenges and rewards. Can you share some of the challenges you faced and your proudest moments in this business? Okay. I personally feel um, one of our biggest challenges are... Okay, this one I felt recently. It's, it's not be complacent. Like, even when things are going so, so good and you think that um, you've, like, made it, like, you can't be so, like oh my gosh, I don't have to work anymore. Like, I don't have to work as hard. That's the biggest thing where a lot of people kind of like fall back on because Mm -hmm. they're like, okay, pretty much I'm good, I'm chilling. Uh, And then later there's a slow year, slow month, whatever the case may be, or there's like a recession and like your business actually goes slower because you didn't um, work harder to like match with the trends. I think it's, yeah, first and foremost um, is be complacent is one of the, like the challenges that um, we all face. I'm pretty sure all the business owners that um, share this a collective face the same thing. Um, a big one is also content creation. With this, within this, it's like you can have people walking by and shopping your stuff, but like if nobody hears about your store, um, then no, like no one's gonna come in, right? So you have to like get really good and consistent with making content, being on top of the trends, being on top of the game, and putting yourself out there, getting out of your comfort zone. Like I was actually, crazy thing is, when I first started this, I was really shy. Like I couldn't talk to people, I was nervous, I would get like social anxiety, and then I had to be like, oh my gosh, dude, I gotta like stop being so like in my shell about things, right? And open up because like, it's, life is like really short, there's like, so many opportunities that are you're like stopping yourself from because you feel so secluded and and in your shell, right? So then one of the biggest things is was opening up and being like, I don't give a fuck. Pretty much, I don't know how to swear, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that. So um, sorry, I answered part of it. I think the other half was. Um, what was your proudest moment? In proudest the moment. Proudest moment was honestly, I think it was day one opening when we saw everything come into fruition. Um, Everybody had their roles. There was one person on marketing, there's one person doing like literally the logistics of this business, building the racks, painting the walls. And when everybody came together on opening day and like saw like the 80 people lined up at the door, um, the sales obviously, and um, just everybody like the positive feedback we were getting I think that was like the most 
rewarding and most like accomplished we've ever felt it was just like it was a really good attestment to like what we're doing is actually working um so yeah that's great thank you okay what's next for cherry pick do you have any exciting plans or projects in the future such as expanding your online presence mm -hmm. or unique collaborations you'd like to share okay so ooh, i don't know if i can drop too much tea mm -hmm. okay should i drop some tea i'll drop a little bit i'll drop a little bit i personally feel with the way that cherry pick is moving right now and how i'm uh, a big part of cherry pick too there's definitely going to be more because with cherry pick right now um it is what it is it is more of a, a local within canada even like within british columbia brand but with my brand i do have like a little bit more outreach so i really want to like collab on cherry pick to make it bigger than it is already um also because we're moving at a pace where we're opening like stores at a pretty consistent rate potentially a third store coming um coming up soon <laughs> so uh what else should i mention we also are thinking of like doing collabs with celebrities influencers um so yeah that's something in the works <laughs> exciting so yeah okay as members of the Emily Carr University Fashion Club, we're interested in your insights. Mm -hmm. What advice or message would you give to students and aspiring fashion enthusiasts? Ooh, okay. Well, let's say uh, I made actually a video on this one, actually, like based on what was I going to say again? Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. okay, for someone that is newly in the fashion industry and want to like expand let's say their reach or even expand their wardrobe or even expand their confidence within fashion i would say the biggest thing that i learned from everything i've done so far is pretty much like what i said before i don't know if i can swear but pretty much like not caring what anybody else says because um this is what i had to really it was all about perspective like when I was wearing what I was wearing out in the street, like looking super like flashy and I felt nervous about it, I was like, people aren't really like, they could be like staring at me like momentarily only for a split second, but like nobody actually really cares. And like most people stop their like movement, stop like what they're doing um, because they feel, they fear that people are thinking or judging them. Like let's say you want to build a brand for yourself but you're thinking, what if my parents say this? What if uh, my friends don't support me? Dude, honestly, they will, the right ones will. The wrong ones or the people that weren't meant to be your friends will, won't support you in any way capacity. So it will just show, and it, it's gonna be a light to show who are the real ones uh, in this industry. Um, and with fashion, like I guess, how to expand your wardrobe more so is, um sticking with basics if you i know with university students too like i was definitely one i had no money like literally super super broke um the thing i figured out was you can have a lot of basics or just the core basics white shirt um maybe a pair of pants that goes with anything and then have a f several statement pieces mm -hmm. and then that can go a long way because now you can interchange all those pieces you can wear like a crazy jacket to go with a white shirt, a black shirt. Um, and then later, you honestly only need, in my closet, I'll be so for real with you. I only have three or four pairs of pants. I only have um, three t-shirts and I only have like four jackets. I only have like 10-ish, 10 to 12, maybe 15 items in my closet. So you don't need a whole lot. And I have like different outfits for it every single day. Like I can wear this jacket with or this hoodie, different pair of pants, different shirt combination. Like there's so many different combinations that you can pair with. So that's kind of like where you can start with, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's my tip or my um, little, yeah, my little advice for people getting into fashion, fashion enthusiasts that want to look dripped out but on a budget. 
yeah. Okay. Okay. Before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to mention or discuss regarding your store, your mm. or your journey in the vintage fashion world? Mm. Okay, I I'm gonna say one thing. Um, so a lot of my friends um, are kind of like lost in life, I guess, and don't know really where they want to go. Hmm. I, cause I've answered this question before, and I wanted to give like insight to the world of like how I was able to come on this spot and like um, how I was able to put myself in these shoes. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was um, if you really like something or if you really enjoy something, go so hard in that there's no like plan B. Um, consistency is so key. Like I would have probably never made it to this point if I took maybe like a day um, even or what is that called if I even had like a moment of like I couldn't really do this um, or a moment of doubt I probably I feel like I wouldn't have made it to this point um, so you just have to like really trust your instincts and have so much faith in what you're doing is correct um, even if it doesn't feel like it's correct now um, you'll see like the results after it's like collecting the fruits of labor like after you've gone through all that work so I guess that's to all like friends emerging artists uh, business owners um, pretty much everyone like consistency and connections are like one of my biggest tips yeah thank you so much for having this interview with us today it was very nice getting to know more about you Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate you guys. I'm like, I'm so thankful for you guys like coming in here and like catching me when I'm like, I, this is a really good time for me. I'm like super chilled right now because I don't even have to think about work right now. Um, I'm just at peace. And like, I love talking about like this topic, especially like where I can like help other people too. That's like my biggest thing. Like when I got into fashion, I really wanted to help other people and like make people feel like they're like worthy of their own like self, their own body and whatnot. So that's why I love these interviews because you can put it out and then if someone needed this word, um, it's online. They can see it, they can watch it. So super happy for you guys bringing me in. Yes.